When I was in high school, I had a job working with a plumber. Now, when I say plumber, immediately in your mind, you either picture Mario or a heavy set guy underneath the sink with his butt crack. But neither of those scenarios. We spent, we spent all of our time on new construction or building stuff like that. And I remember there was a day, well, not a day, there was a, there was a season because I was the youngest guy who worked for the company and the smallest guy who worked for the company and the guy that was easiest to boss around who worked for the company. And so what would happen is they would give me the worst job that you could have in this scenario. And no, it's not cleaning up poop. It's not having to do anything with poop. It's doing the plumbing in a Florida attic. In the middle of the summer. So here's the deal. They would always, we'd get to a job site and they would go, all right, buddy, you're up. And I would have to, I would have to climb up there and I would have to, the, the, everything would be covered in insulation. And so you're, you're literally like trying to army crawl through to get to where you need to go. And it's like 300 degrees in there. Right? It is blazing hot in that attic. And I had one day that I remember, I remember I had forgotten water. And so I spent about two hours in this attic trying to, trying to crimp stuff. And I remember telling the guy, I was like, hey, I think, can we go somewhere and get water? And he, he could not care any less. He just was standing on the ladder going, no, you got it. And I remember feeling like, I will die today. This is, this is. True story, but I didn't die. Okay, all right, so. But you understand that water is really, really important. Uh, I've been, I've been uh, hiking before where the only water you can get is the stuff that you're going to find like either in a well or in a stream or something like that. And uh, that's important too, but, but here's the deal. You need water to live, but if you drink that without purifying it or filtering it or something, you could also get sick and really die. And so um, I've actually been in, in places where I've drank bad water and then um, did spend, um, did spend the, the entire evening like this next to a toilet, <laughs> right? So I've done, I've done both of those things, right? Water is incredibly important, but we're not just talking about water today. I want to talk to you a little bit about something else. I want to talk to you about what happens when we face problems. What does this have to do with water? I'll tell you in a little bit, but right now... I want us to think about times that we have encountered conflict or times that we've had people come against us. You know, it's crazy. I'm in my 30s. I'm an old man. I'm double at least every single one of you in age. I'm an old, old man. But you know what's crazy is I can still remember some of the insults that people said to me when I was younger than you. Like, I can still remember insults from elementary school, and I can still remember the insults from middle school, and, and, and I, I, I've heard them all. I, I was called all of the things. I, I, was called, uh, I was called stupid and annoying. I was called um, nerdy and, and too smart or immature or fat or not athletic or not funny or not cool or um, not handsome or any of those things. And you know what? There are going to be times where people come against you too. Now listen, look at me, look at me. I think all of you are likable. I like all of you, every single one of you, except for you. But uh, I'm just kidding. I wasn't even looking at anybody. So no, I like all of you. I think all of you are likable. But here's the deal. Even though I think you are likable, there will be people that will come against you. And I think it's really important that we, we understand that there is a way to treat people who come against us. There's a way to respond 
when people come against us too. So before we go any further, we're going to throw up some small group questions. We're going to talk about this in our group, and then we'll be back. All right? Let's do it. We've been in a series called Founding Fathers, and we're talking about three fathers. We're talking about Abraham, who's the father of Isaac, who's the father of Jacob. Uh, Jacob was a father of the 12 tribes of Israel. And last week we talked about Isaac, and we're going to pick up again with Isaac. Now, what does his life have to do with water and bullies? Well, I, I want to tell you what happens to him in Genesis 26. So here's what the Bible tells us. It says, Isaac planted his crops. This is Genesis 26, verse 12. It says, Isaac planted his crops, and he harvested more, a hundred times more than he planted. For the Lord blessed him. Life is going really good for Isaac. God is taking care of him. Things are are good. How many of you have ever been picked on, but you weren't doing anything, like everything was going normal, and then somebody started to pick something with you? All right, yeah. So Isaac, he's got nothing, like God's go, taking care of him. Things are going good. Um, it, it says in verse 13, he became very rich. His wealth continued to grow. Verse 14, he acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herd of cattle and servants, that the Philistines became jealous. So God is taking care of him so well that people get jealous. Jealous or jealousy is, uh, is when someone is angry with you for something that you have. Sometimes it's with people, like you have a good friendship with somebody, and somebody is jealous of your friendship. They are mad at you because of how close you are to somebody. But in this scenario, they're jealous of all of the things that he has. And so here's what they do. In verse 15, it says, The Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father, Abraham. Now, I need to explain something to you. At this time, at this time, the wells that are dug are incredibly hard to dig. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to dig a large hole before with a shovel, but it takes forever, absolutely forever to get low enough in the dirt to hit water, okay? But here's the other deal. 4,000 years ago, nobody's using shovels. All right, so you're like out there trying to dig, dig, dig. It takes forever to dig a well, to get a well, to get water. And you need that water because if you don't have water, you do what? You die. So literally, people come and they fill in his wells with dirt. What does that mean? It means that if he can't get water, he and everyone who's with him, his servants, his herds, his sheep, his goats, all of them, they will die. Not only that, but it's like personal too because those wells were the ones that his dad gave him. Like they were the wells from his Dad, how many of you have ever inherited something like cool from a family member? I have, this is, it's one of my favorite things. I have a picture, I have a picture of um, some of my family members from like the 19, uh, I think it's from the 1960s, and I have the camera that took that picture, which is really cool to me. I have like these two things together, it's really neat. So, so these were given to him. He's got these wells, the Philistines, they fill it in. He's in trouble. And then they make it worse. Verse 16, it says, finally, Abimelech. Abimelech is the name for the Philistine king. It says, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else. You become too powerful. Abimelech says, hey, you can't eat at this table. Hey, you can't sit next to me. Hey, you can't, you can't text my friends. Hey, you can't play this game with us. Hey, you can't 
you can't be here. Get out. Now, here's the thing. Did you catch what the Bible just said? Isaac was too powerful. Here's what that means. That means between Isaac and the Philistines, if they were going to fight, who's going to win? Isaac. Wait, wait, wait. Not only is he more powerful, but he's got God with him, right? So if he's going to fight, who's going to win? Isaac. So let's look. Let's see what Isaac does. In verse 17, it says, Isaac moved away. And he set up tents and he settled. And then it says, he reopened the wells his father had dug which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. So, so he, they said, get out of here, and he left. And they filled in his wells, and he, and, and he just went back, and he worked, and he worked, and they, re, they re-dug all the wells. And that's crazy to me that Isaac, who really is more powerful, who really is stronger, Instead of rising up and going, okay, buddy, he goes, hey, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back here. And he goes away, and he starts to dig more wells. Guess what happens? They come back and find him, and they fight, and they say, oh, no, 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 no. Those are our wells. They said, no, 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 we dug those wells. He's like, no, I dug them. They have my name on them. And they go, no, 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 they're ours. You know what the Bible says? It says he moves and he opens another well. And they chase him again and they go, no, 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 that's our well. That's ours. We made it. We found it. And he goes, okay. And he moves again and he digs another well. Now, here's what the Bible tells us when it comes to enemies. And the Bible is very clear that we're going to have enemies. Jesus is the most likable guy in the whole Bible, in uh, in the whole world, and he had enemies. You will have enemies too, but here's what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us to take care of your enemies, not um, which like most of us want to do, which is like, um, how can I destroy my enemies? How can, how can I make them pay? Romans 12, verse 14, says this. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Wait, wait, wait. So if you had people who who made fun of you on your bus, do you know what the Bible says to do? To get them back, you pray for them real hard. You pray blessing over them. That's what the Bible says. It says don't curse them. Bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who uh, come against you. Pray that God will bless them. The Bible tells us to live at peace with people as much as we can. Um, here's, here's what Romans twelve seventeen says. It says never Pay back evil with more evil. Okay. Okay. So, how many of you have hit that point in math where you get to do negative numbers? I love negative numbers. If you add two negative numbers together, do you know what you get? No. You get a bigger negative number. Because when evil... When evil meets evil, you get more evil. But sometimes we think, oh, they were mean to me. I'll be mean back. I'll show them. And the Bible says, do you know what? Do you know what you'll get out of that? You'll get evil. Because evil plus evil equals evil. That's what it does. The last thing we do is we trust God. Romans 12, 19 says, 
Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Did you know that God gets mad at injustice? Did you know that God gets mad at bullying? Did you know that God gets mad when people slander each other? Did you know that God gets mad when you're mocked? Did, did you know that God gets mad when people are cruel to you? And the Bible says, don't take it into your own hands. Let God take care of that. So here's what happens. Isaac keeps moving, keeps moving, keeps moving, and he keeps digging wells. And then something amazing happens. Because every time he digs a well, God blesses him. Every time he digs a well, God blesses him. And the Philistines see that God continues to bless them. In fact, they say in Genesis 26, 28, we can plainly see that God is with you. And so then they say, hey, we can see, we can see that God is with you. We don't want any trouble with you. Can we make it? Can we, can we have a peace treaty with you? Can we make it so that you, um, you, you forget about this and then you never go to war with us again? And do you know what? From that moment, for hundreds of years, the Philistines and the Israelites don't have war. Why? Because God showed that he was stronger. And I love this because it's such a good reminder for us. We will have enemies, but the Bible says that we can trust God to take care of those. And we can, we can give them to God. We could pray for them. We could ask God to care for us. And we can do everything possible to live at peace. Now, uh, let me say something real fast. The Bible says in uh, Romans 12, 17, as much as it depends on you, live at peace. Now, here's the deal. There are going to be some people who, even if you are nice back to them, will not be nice to you. I'm not saying that you're not telling your teachers or your coaches or your parents. You need to do those things. Right? I, I'm not saying that you aren't, aren't appealing to the authority, but I am telling you that God has a vested interest in this too. And that God will bring justice, that God will be the one who takes care of you. So, J-Box, this morning, I, I, want, I want to encourage us to be people of peace. 